This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Bob Klein. Welcome to this combined worship service for Trinity and Fort Yuma United Methodist Churches. I hope that you are blessed by your participation in our service this day, and we want to be in, continue to be in touch with you. If you would visit our website at trinityyuma.org, you will have an opportunity to sign up to receive our prayer requests or our weekly updates. This is a primary means we have for keeping in touch with you, so please sign up as soon as you can. We also invite you to a time of fellowship via Zoom. On Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., we have Coffee with Karen. Please contact the church office if you would like to participate in this group, and we will give you the sign-up information. And please remember to keep the church office informed of any prayer requests or other needs that you might have. We want to continue to be in ministry with you during this time of separation. And now may our ears be open to hear God's word this day. Please join us in either singing or humming along with this hymn, Gather Us In. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere. That we may share God's love and life. May we be renewed in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Our scripture lesson comes from the 8th chapter of Romans, verses 12 through 27. Two large themes fill this passage from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. The Christian responsibility, responsibility to live by the Spirit rather than after the flesh, even if that faithfulness involves sufferings, and the assurance of the Holy Spirit's comfort and intercession as Christians await the coming glory. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit 
you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every heart be pleasing to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know if any of you ever read the obituaries. My guess is that the older you are, the more likely you are to let your eyes drift over to that section of the newspaper. Seems like in the last few days, there's been more and more obituaries published. As a comedian would say, we want to just make certain that our name is not printed there. Of course, some of our younger members are probably asking, what's a newspaper? An interesting obituary appeared in the Chattanooga Times Free Press in December 2019 that, in my estimation, was good for a chuckle or two. It was for Katie McDonald, 80 years old, the obituary contained all kinds of praise for her virtues as a human being. But as you read down the page, you were exposed to some of her eccentricities as well. One paragraph read like this. She was preceded in death by the father of their four children, Charles Allen McDonald, whom she loved to her dying day, and her beloved family pets, Simon, the Siamese cat, Peanut, the wiener dog, Sugar, the howling dog, Daisy, the very special, extremely important stray dog, and most notably, Jack, her darling mutt, who lost his tail in an unfortunate accident, whereupon mom saved the tail in the freezer, just in case. Then appears the words, go figure. Later in the obituary, we read, she left behind a load of stuff her family doesn't know what to do with. There's a list of these miscellaneous items and then this notice. Anyone interested in having these items, please wait the appropriate amount of time to reach out. Tomorrow should be fine. After listing her church where friends would be received and a service that would be held, there was this final notice. Finally, the family asked that in lieu of flowers, please write your congressman and ask for the repeal of the Daylight Savings Time Act. We think mom would like that if it were all on if we were all on the Lord's time. Now, repealing the Daylight Savings Time Act doesn't really make much of a difference to us since we don't mess around with adjusting time. But I found that to be quite a refreshing approach to the death of a loved one 
who evidently had lived a good life, had a strong faith, who loved her family, her pets, and her God. That's the way a Christian's death should be greeted. There should be a celebration of a life well lived and an anticipation of a new life now lived in the presence of a loving God. So that brings us to our topic for today. It's hope, Christian hope. Years ago in his book, Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude, business writer Napoleon Hill told about a successful cosmetic manufacturer, probably Charles Refson, the founder of the Revlon Cosmetic Company, who decided he would retire at the age of 65. Each year thereafter, his friends and former business associates gave him a birthday party and tried to find out the secret of his success. In other words, the secret for his special cosmetic formula. But year after year, he refused good-naturedly to reveal his secret. Maybe I'll tell you next year, he would say. This went on for 10 years until the businessman celebrated his 75th birthday. As usual, his associates begged him to share the secret formula with them so they could continue the business after his death. Finally, he yielded to their insistence. In addition to the things which I use, which are commonly known, he said, there is one secret ingredient that I package in every bottle. Now, by this time, everyone at the party was, was listening with rapt attention. What is it? An anxious friend inquired. Please don't keep us in suspense any longer. Refson replied, I never told a woman that my product would make her beautiful, but I always gave her hope. Hope, he said, is the magic ingredient. Well, hope is the magic ingredient, whether in life or in death. In good times or times of sorrow, the magic ingredient is the assurance that regardless of how challenging today is, God is in charge. And that, as St. Paul says in Romans 8, 28, all things work to the good for those who love him. That's hope. In today's lesson, which is devoted to hope, St. Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now think about that for just a moment. This is what hope is all about. It is the admission that the present times may not be perfect. In fact, they may be heart-wrenching, but if we trust in God, better days lie yet ahead. Our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. St. Paul knew that none of us get through life without wrestling at some time or another with some daunting challenges. At times, all of us will face difficult challenges. During the Vietnam War, Admiral James Stockdale was the highest ranking U.S. officer taken as a prisoner by the Vietnamese. For eight years, James Stockdale was held hostage under horrific circumstances in a POW camp where he was tortured regularly, but he did not give up and he did not give in. In fact, he was a remarkable inspiration to his fellow soldiers. Jim Collins, author of the best-selling book, Good to Great, had the opportunity to spend some time with Stockdale. Collins writes, what separates people, Stockdale taught me, is not the presence or absence of difficulty, but how they deal with the inevitable difficulties of life. Stockdale believed that if you retain faith, that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and at the same time confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be, you will be victorious. Stockdale's convictions were not based on blind optimism, he said. He was asked about prisoners who did not survive. He replied, oh, that's easy. These were the optimists. They were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come and Christmas would go. And then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter. And Easter would come and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving 
and then it would be Christmas again. One by one, he said, they died of a broken heart. James Stockdale did not die of a broken heart. In fact, in 1992, after the war, he was Ross Perot's running mate in the race for president of the United States. But notice Stockdale's emphasis. Hope is not the same as blind optimism. The belief that somehow everything will somehow work out fine. Without God, nothing is certain to work out fine. A good example of such persistence in the face of adverse circumstances is the early Christian community. They faced horrific circumstances at times, yet they never gave in to doubt and fear. They were certain that God was with them and that God would see them through. They embodied Paul's words. Their present sufferings were not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. How else could they keep going if they did not have? Years ago, a husband and wife and their grown son immigrated from Sicily to Southern Illinois. There, both father and son found work in a coal mine, but then tragedy struck. There was an explosion in the mine. The father was killed and the son was maimed. While he was recovering in the hospital, the young man, along with his mother, came to trust Jesus Christ as their savior. They had such a profound effect on them that they changed their surname. The name they chose for themselves was Sperando. In Italian, that means, my hope is in God. This phrase became the young man's inspiration to complete college and graduate study and become a college professor. His name was the motto of his life, Speron Deo, my hope is in God. Where else is such hope to be found? Do you know any other place? Government, education, science, none of these can reach where you hurt during dark times. Only faith in God's promises can do that. It's like a story that a Lutheran pastor named Reuben Youngdahl tells. It's about a young man he met while visiting in Dublin, Ireland one summer. Youngdahl noticed this young man had on the desk in his study a plaque with two words on it. The words were, but God. Pastor Youngdahl was so impressed by this plaque that he had one made up just like it for his own desk. Visitors to his office would ask him, what do you mean by those two words, but God? He explained that in his hour of deepest need, he learned to say, but God will help. In a moment of utter despair, he could say, but God will give me hope. In a moment of loneliness, he could say, but God is with me. When he felt insignificant and unwanted, it would help to repeat, but God loves me. That always turned the scale from despair to hope, from defeat to victory, from sin to salvation, he reported. But God, but God, but God. You see, that is much more than blind optimism, that everything is simply going to work out all right. Such faith recognizes that, that life can often be hard, sometimes brutally hard. But if we maintain our faith, and if we will persist and not give up, God will come through for us. As long as there is hope, Christian hope, life is worth living. The late Emil Brunner once said, what oxygen is for the lungs, such is hope for the meaning of human life. He was right. Really, a hope-filled life is the only life worth living. Let me tell you about a young man who discovered the meaning of such hope. Some of you who are football fans may remember the name of Russell Okung. Okung was chosen twice to play in the Pro Bowl while with the Seattle Seahawks. More recently, he played with Denver and then with the Los Angeles Chargers. He is a man of strong convictions. While with the Seahawks, he did an interview in which he shared his faith in Christ. Listen to his words. 
I grew up being extremely self-sufficient. My father passed away when I was a young child, making me the man of the household. Since then, I've taken on that responsibility. As I grew up, I did a lot of things for myself and I became really independent. However, in college, a hurricane went through Houston and my mom and sister were at the house by themselves. I was off at school. It was a tough time. They called and said that the house was flooded. They told me that it would be all right. But I remember looking at myself and asking, why? Why was this going on? Why did my father pass away when I was a child? Why did I feel this way? All these whys. In asking that, I found out some things were just out of my control. I couldn't do everything on my own. I thought there had to be something bigger to make sense of what was happening in my life. I remember sitting at chapel one day when God spoke to me. It's crazy how God will come to you even in the most small, subtle ways, maybe even a whisper. He told me, you don't have to do this alone. You're not by yourself. At that moment, I realized God had always been there, since I was a very small child even. Even though I thought I was doing things all on my own, I couldn't have done anything without God. When that happened, I knew God could only be my present hope. If I truly believed in him, everything would take care of itself. And it did. All of a sudden, I noticed that things were changing. I felt more at peace within me and a peace about my situations. I learned and trusted God with everything I had, and I decided to give it all to God. Russell Okung, a big, tough, former professional football player, was describing the magic ingredient in his life. Hope, Christian hope, the belief that we may go through some rough times that we may not understand, but if we trust God and persist in our faith in him, God will always come through. We are not alone. St. Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Do you have that kind of confidence in God? It truly is the magic ingredient that takes life to a whole new level. Trust God. Amen. community joys and concerns for the week. For Rita Derek B's mom, strength and healing as she continues cancer treatments. For Miguel C, who is in the hospital in Tucson, prayers for healing. For Maria R, whom we had been praying for in the hospital with COVID, she has been released from the hospital, thanks be to God. Frank and Maddie D, each battling back from stage four cancers. Frank has been instructed by his doctor to close his home-based band instrument repair business for several months while his immunity is down. People in Yemen, whose country has been at war for five years, they are facing a famine and large medical shutdowns due to lack of protective equipment. Pray that relief agencies will be able to provide food and medical aid. For Pete N, please pray for improvement as his PSA number has risen again. For Linda, whose family all have COVID, her husband is in the hospital and she and three grown children are at home caring for each other. 
for Kathy Lynn CV undergoing cardiac tests for valve failure. For Marion P's son, Steve, who had an angiogram, praised that his results were better than first understood. His blockage is able to be treated with medication. For Carrie G, who had interviews this week, Thanksgiving that she did receive not one but two job offers. For Frances K, Anna Marie S's niece, as she continues physical therapy and COVID treatments in Tucson. For Carol, Anna Marie S's sister, who has been tested for COVID-19, prayers for healing, for patience, and treatment. For baby Charlotte L, she had her four-month checkup yesterday and is doing great. Praise God that she is doing so well. The family is still using the diapers and wipes from the diaper shower. Marlene and Ray E are safe and sound. Ruth W, make sure they stay in and stay safe. They are busy with projects. For Carol N and Sharon S, Anna Marie's sisters, both of whom are now in self-isolation. We give thanks for the Arizona National Guard as they continue to work at the Yuma Community Food Bank. Thanks to the Trinity family who go and help with packing. Prayers for teachers and staff as they prepare for the unknowns of reopening schools around Yuma throughout the state of Arizona and all across the country. Praise that Laura Page D is still able to go to work in California in the food service industry. Praise that Pinky Karen C. Cat is on the mend and that Karen's brother Kim is coming over to help with administration of pills. Prayers for Debbie C., a Bell Choir member, awaiting cancer treatments and recovering from spinal surgery. For the family and friends of Roger Hefner who passed away this week. For all first responders as they continue dealing with the pandemic and for Michael F., who has been experiencing a headache and not feeling well the past few days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may come down from my heights and be open to the same spirit who moved over the face of the waters in the first day of creation and moves also over the chaos of this time to fashion a day like this, a world like ours, a life like mine, a kingdom acting as a leaven in the breadth of earth. And make me aware of miracles of life, of warm and cold, of starkness and order, of screaming wind and impenetrable silences and of the unfathomable mysteries of amazing grace in which I am kept. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may praise you for all the surprising, ingenious ways you bless me, and for all the wondrous gifts you give me, along with all the pain and joy I sustain. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may accept my own talent openly. Nurture it hopefully, develop it faithfully, and give it freely. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may love your kindness and practice it toward the hungry of the world, the poor and sick and oppressed, that I may learn the healing humility that comes from you. Teach me your ways, Lord, so that my heart is flooded with your mercy, emptying it of what makes it firmly opposed to your ways so that it beats more in rhythm with you and pounds greatly for your kingdom. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Holy Scripture tells us that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Given such a divine affirmation, let us give offerings of thanksgiving.
And now will you receive this benediction. As you go from here into the week ahead, with whatever joys and challenges it holds, do not be discouraged or disheartened. Remember the glory that awaits you as a child of God. Hold on to that truth. Live in that hope. And may the peace of God, the blessing of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you, now and forever. Amen. We look forward to your participation in our virtual worship next week. In the meantime, wear a mask, wash your hands, and stay safe. Be blessed and be a blessing. Join now as we sing together, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.